Hi everyone. Good morning. My name is Raul. So this is the way that I pronounce my name in, in English. But in Portuguese, you say Raul. In Spanish, you say like Raul. So, but this presentation is not about my name, you know. So uh, today I'm going to talk about a few of a bunch of features that you can use for NFV to get a, a tune, a, be a better tune for your environment. So OpenStack environment means network environment. Okay. So this is my contact here. So my Twitter is just is over there so my blog is is just right over there right too so if you guys after this presentation i'm going to share the pre this presentation in my twitter and my blog so you guys can don't worry to take you know some screen that's some shots so from there i can just share this of this presentation okay of the sessions sorry so the agenda for today i'm going to talk about nfv architecture some basic concepts i know that you guys already know about that but uh, of course i've just you know uh, I hope it, all of you guys are still in the same in the same in the same point. So I'm gonna talk after uh, about NFV bottlenecks, so, and, and then I'm gonna just describe and explain for you guys a few of uh, parameters that you can enable from from the NFV perspective, from the hypervisor perspective to the instance to get a better performance. So I'm gonna talk about SCR IOV, PCI pass through, huge pages and CPU Pini, NUMA, and DPDK. So let's keep forward. So about NFV architecture, so I know you guys feel like that, you know, almost the time, most part of the time, because it's deja vu, like, everywhere. Ever, maybe it's not the, for sure, this is not first talk about NFV. So if you guys feel like that, of, you, are, you are okay. So don't, don't be worried. Don't worry about that. So I think, and if you feel like the another guy in the second picture, so if you haven't seen all, all, all of these before, it's fine too because uh, this is not new. So th the question is, this is not new, but uh, every time that you see this again, it's better for you guys to understand uh, how to set up that. So why I'm bringing this kind of subject for this presentation? Okay, so let's keep forward. So, so the basic NFV concepts. So I, I, NFV concepts is just, you know, I mean, I think it's the, the better way to describe NFV when I, when I use this kind of picture, because I, here you can see all the old, the, the mode one of IT that is traditional, that you just use it as a hardware appliance, and then you just migrate for the, for the, virtual, for the virtual instances. So you, you just came from the hardware, so and then you have an instance running over your infrastructure, op OpenStack infrastructure or workload. So there's the difference. I'm not talking about mono or how to orchestrate NFV. It's just the, the point of view from the hypervisor perspective, you know, so how you can enable from, from the kernel side that you can get a better performance using this NFV concept. Okay, so let's keep forward. So what I'm talking about, exactly as I said in the, in the beginning of this presentation, is just talking about you know how to tune in FEV based on this kind of bottleneck. So, usually, what kind of bottlenecks we got from the NFV? So, usually you see problems with packet loss. So you can see some problem with hypervisor overhead that impact your workload and maybe allow routing or traffic throughputs or problems with CPU load average, something like that, or a few problems with kind of a resource allocation when I'm talking about the network. So in schedule two, so. Just example of NFV, so, I mean, uh, example, if you have uh, like a hardware that do in the, did for you in the past, like uh, the VPN server, so now you transition that for an instance, you're running over the OpenStack infrastructure, but in a few cases, this kind of example, NFV server is supposed to be, or NFV appliance have some kind of chip that you just uh, responsible to realize all the crypto stuff so this is required to you know to requests from the cpu side so i mean you need to have you know better, best of tuning of your environment to get a better performance right there so now i'm going to talk about a few features that you can able to get this performance to solve that kind of problems that i mentioned in in fv bottleneck so pci pass through it's one of that that you can able i mean PCI pass through, it's easy way to explain, easy, easy way to see. So here, what are you gonna do is just, you know, present 
for the instance, for the guests, the, the, the network interface card directly. So you just show for the instance the access, which, which device you want to share direct for the, to, to the instance. So you don't need to get to be worried about you know, the hypervisor stuff. So you take off all the workloads from the hypervisor. You just show to the instance direct access to the direct from the, I'm sorry, from the network card. Okay, so, so no sharing of the network card. You are not sharing the physical network card because it just showed that this network card direct and you attach direct to the instance. Okay, so what what is requirement to do that? So the first thing you must be you know you you you, you must know it's your hardware supports of course now currently most part of hardware support this kind of feature. So you must have the VT technology. So this comes from the new processors so or the new CPUs, uh, every, every processors come with that flag, so you, you just need that. So how can I enable that? So you can check this configuration directly in the nova.com file, and then you can create like a, like a alias, and then you set up that over the, like a property, specify directly in the flavor, and then you can boot the flavor passing by these parameters, okay? So SCROV. What I mean SROV? SROV does for us like a multiple physical uh, interfaces for instance. I mean, each instance has your own, own uh, it looks like each instance has your own interface. So inside of the instance, you're gonna see, a, you know, like a dedicated interface for that. So you take, in this case, you're gonna take all the overhead from the hypervisor too, because it just pass the virtual function direct attached directly to the to the instance. So that is the idea of the single the single root input output virtualization. But this requires a chip that comes with this flag. Okay, so there is not all of network device that comes with this fun functionality. So you must check if your network device support that. So it, it's, it's a few of network devices able to scale until I think 256. No more than this is the limit because if you put a lot of network interface interface inside of that, you're gonna be in trouble. So, I mean, you must know what, what are you going to do. So you first need to check how much you can scale using that. So, basically, this is enable network traffic to bypass the software layer of the hypervisor. So in the flow, I mean, all the flow comes direct to the instance. So you take again, you take off the workload from the hypervisor. Okay. So this is this SROV. How do you does it check it with my hardware support SROV? So use LSPCI and check for the, you know, for the virtual function. If you are, if your card, if your network card support that, you are fine. So you can just set up the neutron to use that. Okay. So here's the step. And as I said in the beginning of this presentation, I'm going to share this presentation in my in my blog, so you can, guys can just download it and copy and paste it. Good. That don't worry with that. About huge page that it can be very useful for use during the, this kind of tuning for for NFV. So usually the architecture x86 comes with the page size with 4K. I mean four kilobytes. But when I'm talking about the huge page and a new hardware support like from 4K until one gigabyte, but usually you're gonna see like people working with two megabytes or four megabytes of the page of a huge, the huge size. And then what I mean, this is, uh, what, what this is, is good when I'm talking about the hard architecture, the kernel architecture, because this is very useful for us because it's just one case. You're gonna just boost your C CPU. So you just improve your cache because you would not work with a 4K size of per page. You are gonna work for two megabytes per page. So you don't gonna spend a lot of time, you know, just querying cache, small cache many times. You just, you know, you have a, a, a less, uh, you have a less queries because you have the size of the cache will be more. So more than 4K, you're gonna, you know, can set up that for two mega and start for two mega and, and, and so on. It up to one gigabyte. So this is obvious you're gonna have a lot of optimization when I'm talking about cache, okay? So how you set up that? The same thing, that just right here, you just enable the host kernel, and you can do that in the host, but usually how to set up there here for the flavor of, yeah, then you boot the, the instance, 
because of the, you can pass the property here like in this common line. Let's keep, keep going. So NUMA and CPU pinning. So here, you know, each, each CPU has your own uh, internal bank, memory bank. So there is a good approach to, to set up all the environment too, because it, especially here, what, it, what I mean with that, you, you can get a better performance because uh, you, you just, you know, use it, a memory closure of, I mean, basically a main, uh, memory closure of your processor, of your CPU. So this is increase your speed. So you can just, you know, pump your CPU w with that. So that is, is very, it's, it's very useful for this kind of tune. So to use that, we're going to take a lot of advantage from your hardware because it's, you know, you don't go, you don't go use it as as the usually you can do that when the the best way to do it. without Numa. What it, what the the example the hypervisor does it just go go all the all the CPUs just go uh, try to access all the memory available in the hardware. So using Numa, the processor knows which domain of memory he's just going. So that is easy to use that because you can get a performance by based on memory proximity. So how to set up that? So and you can use it NUMA control related with CPU CPU pinning because uh, you just you know pin your CPU like dedicate what kind of CPU you're gonna show for that instance and then create like a zone and then you related NUMA PCI pass through or whatever, all these features that I mentioned in this presentation together to get a better performance, okay? So how to do that NUMA CPU pin is just right here to create a flavor and then set up the flavor and then boot the instance. Same thing, you ne must need uh, enable the scheduler, the scheduler to, you know, to enable the NUMA topology filter to enable this kind of filter in the nova.conf. So DPDK is just last but not the least to mention, you know, so I'm gonna mention DPDK. That one, it's uh, a bunch of libraries that can help you guys to get a best performance in terms of the package, packet traffic in, over the network. So I'm not telling about a lot of things over there because I don't have too much time. So this is the presentation for today. Thanks a lot for joining this session. I don't have too much time, as I said, like I think it's just one minute now, but you know, I'm gonna still here in the conference, so we can just talk about outside of her. Thanks a lot for, for joining the session, and thanks.